You are listening to the Get Global Network podcast of the Ask Avani Show. You can hear the show live on Saturdays at 3 p.m. in London, 9 a.m. Central Time in the U.S. on SoMetro Radio, one of the original member stations of the Get Global Network. Right here on So Metro Radio, I want to say a big welcome to everybody wherever you may be, UK, USA, Europe and worldwide. You are in the place to be and this is your regular slot with me, your UK soul queen diva right here on the Get Global Network. We have a very special guest this afternoon. My guest today has a vast wealth of knowledge and experience in the music and entertainment industry. As a professional business consultant, she helps new and independent artists to better understand the music industry and how they can navigate through it to create their own success. My special guest on the Ask Avani show today is CEO and founder of the powerful artist consulting agency, Gina Langton. Hello. Hello <laughs> and welcome to the Ask Avani show. Thank you so much for giving me some of your time today. Well, thank you for having me. Oh, you're very, very welcome. Um, I have a lot of questions for you, as you know, so I'll just get right into it. Because please, can you tell me, how did you get into the music industry? Well, that's a very good question, because I I don't think I've ever been out of the industry. Um, I started age 14 in my first band when I was at school. So I was singing in a band. And, And really, as young as I can remember, all I wanted to do was to be involved with with music to sing and and to be around other musicians. I just, I, I loved, I had a developed, a, at a very early age, a, a love of music. So from, wow. so it, I got into the industry, um, first of all, as a, as a groupie, when I was, <laughs> a, <laughs> I was about 17, I, I, um, I shacked up with a, with a guy, a lovely guy called Jonathan Ross, who had a house in, in Fulham and it was at the time when all the punk so sort of the punk punk was developing um uh-huh. in in Chelsea and Fulham in, in, in the area and and I uh, before we knew it we had everybody from that that punk era era coming in and out of, of the house. So you know we'd have Paul Simon on and sleep on the sofa, he was in the clash, we'd have Joe Strummer, we'd have um, Sid Vicious even visited us a few wow. times. Wow! Um, they were they were crazy times, and we'd go up to to the uh, the Roebuck, which was in in the King's Road, and and I'd play pool with Lemmy. I was always better when I'd had a few pints. <laughs> and and that's kind of that's so I started out as a groupie. I used to go d- down to the One Hundred Club and see the Slits perform and. And the Clash, and you know all all those uh, X-ray specs, all the great bands at that time. So um, my and and actually at one point I was um, uh, actually I'll let you into a little secret. Uh-huh. Uh, Chrissy Hind uh, was also uh, living with us at one point. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> you, you and, had uh, amazing rock legends, and you know you've come through with a lot of rock legends. Yeah, and, and well, rock punk legends, sure. And and uh, you know, Chrissy was was again. You know, she was just wanted all she wanted to do was sing. I think she even asked me to manage her at one point. But in the end, I ended up working for for her first manager called Randall Lee Rose, who had a secondhand gabardine T-shirt shop in the King's Road, in the Great Gear Trading Company. It was called, and I'd run that business for him while he ran around with Chrissy trying to get her deal. Right, right. Fantastic. So it's always been in my, you know, I've tried to sort of move away from it uh, from time to time. But the draw of the music business and music itself always uh, sucks me back in. So yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. I mean, you have a master's degree in music business management. Did you ever believe that you would achieve what you, you know, what you have and, and be doing what you are today? Do you know what? I left school at sixteen, so um, to get in uh, to get in to do that masters was was extraordinary, and it didn't. It, it happened actually um, as a result of a very painful experience that um, I had a publishing company, and I had somebody signed who um, 
managed to to kind of do a crafty one on me and and, and take the deal from me that I got them in Japan. Oh. And you know, I just realised I, I just don't know enough, and I need to, to I need to strengthen my networks, and I need to get you know I need to sort of reconcile my the things that I do know and expand on the things that I don't know. And so I I went to, I went to Westminster University and I got I got a place um, as a mature student based on my portfolio what I'd done in the past and what I what I was doing at the time. So I, I got in and it was it was the best experience of my life. I and mean, imagine leaving school at sixteen and then being able to get into university to do a master's. Um, of course, it was very different when. I realised that. They... <laughs> exactly. That's why I wanted to ask you about it because that is amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, it took every ounce of my, uh, yeah, my kind of yeah, every every. I mean, I almost lost my partner through it oh, because wow. I, just, I was up at six in the morning and 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 studying, studying, studying um, until a uh, very late at night. But I did. I produced quite a nice paper, which is about the uh, the the way publishers work in, in right. the industry, which is right. publishing is something that a lot of artists don't understand anything about. Absolutely. I have a lot of questions for you this afternoon. I mean, you said that you wanted to get into the industry from when you were about 14 and then you finally managed it at 16 to, to go back to university. But no, 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 16. That was, I left school at 16. I got into university when I was a lot older. I'm not going to tell you. Ah, okay. <laughs> But yeah. then, so when, when between 16 and leaving school and finally doing the masters, because you said you were in and out of the music industry, can I ask what made you want to really get into it and keep going back into it then? Just because I, I miss the, miss the people, you know, I, in fact, it, it, for me, you know, listening to music and being with musicians is kind of a reason for being alive. I, I, I can't really explain to, for me, it's a very spiritual experience being connected with anything to do with music and and the people in the music business and you know I kind of grew up with those people they're my people musicians mm. are, are are people that that I connect with and absolutely absolutely so you've always wanted to work in the industry so can you tell us have you got any inspirations as well what inspirations what do you mean by that um, musical inspirations or business inspirations that made you want to be in that industry you know music entertainment and the business world in general well I just I mean for me I don't forget I had um, when I was growing up with you know when I lived in that house in in Fulham I grew I was growing up with a whole in fact there were some great musicians that I did live with called Judy Nylon, Nylon and uh, Patty Paladin they had a band called Snatch and I just I really the inspiration for me was how how really seriously they took their their art mm. you know how, how, you know they were very in, in those days, they were very uh, anarchic about what what they what they could see and what they were angry about, and I just felt it was a great. I was just inspired because it was a great um, vehicle to communicate. And in fact, when I started writing songs myself, you know, I I used it, used my vehicle of songwriting to produce songs that had some kind of comment to make about society and and my relationship to it so mm. the, the inspiration for me has always been um a, about a social commentary actually mm. but done in a, in a musical um way that communicates on a much deeper level fantastic so you you're basically like the creative person and also but you also realized quite early on that you needed to be able to get into the business side to really make it work and and you wanted to understand more about that as well Yes, and I, you know, I have, uh, I've had failure after failure. Actually, wow. it, you know, it's been, it's been a, it's been an extraordinary um, learning curve, and I think that's what I really like to share with artists today, mm. is that, that, that it's, you know, it's a very, very, very interesting and challenging uh, learning curve, and uh, to, to actually, you know, to st I encourage them to stick at it, but I also help them to underpin what they're doing. Mm. Um, with some some rules about how to to get it, you know create a sustainable business, um, which is you know I've I've learned it the, the very hardest way possible because I'm very 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 left brain I think it is. <laughs> I mean, because you already said that there were a few times that you wanted to change direction. Can you talk a bit more about that? Because obviously, and you, when you first started out and all the things that you've been through, as you said, it's very challenging, isn't it? Yeah, it's very challenging because there's 
in a way, the sort of the spectrum is so broad that if you when you get in at the very beginning, you know there there is there's no financial support. There's there's very very little you can do. Well, there's a lot more you do on social media these days, I and mean, it's much easier these days. But you know the initial stages are it's a it's a you know it's a long tail kind of journey, and so um, for uh, I don't want to lose my track now, but um, so well, to just go back to the question again, will you? Because I know <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. I'm just wondering, you know, when you said you wanted to change direction, can you give yeah. us like examples or of times when you suddenly thought, oh, you know what, this isn't working for me. Let me try something else. Yeah, sure. I mean, the the, the time um, I, I changed direction was when I was in my early twenties um, because I met somebody at a party and ended up going off and marrying them. <laughs> <laughs> And they weren't in the music business, and it was uh, although they they came from a from an entertainment family, they actually they themselves were in the in the property business. Oh and, wow! Yeah, and so and very quickly we we had two children, and and very quickly we needed a you know a decent home to live in. So I got into buying and selling the houses that we were living in, and actually doing really well. So it's never been it's never been any rocket science to what what I what I've done, but I've I, what I whatever I've tried to do, I've tried to do very very well. Absolutely. So it's always been at some points, usually as well, a necessity because that's what they say. It's, it's the mother of all necessity. Sometimes you think, right, well, I've got to find a way to survive and keep going, and if I can get back into that, then I'll do it. But at the moment, I've got to think about what I need to do right now to to sort of keep myself going. I mean, can I ask you, yeah. as a woman, was it hard for you to get into the industry when you first started? especially the business side of it oh yeah I mean absolutely um the the uh, it's, I mean the business side of the music business is is terribly gender biased mm. it still is really difficult um mm. so I mean it, what I ended up doing was really working r around the fringes you know um where the the majority part of my of my career in the industry has been uh, running shows and you know that are kind of on 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 the fringe, and and then when I went to university, which was in two thousand and six, I really then my whole my goal was to get get my master's degree and then go over to the more co corporate side because I I saw it you know the corporate side not as a not as a kind of oh must get involved with the corporates but for me it it was the challenge you know right. as as an artist as a person as an individual. I thought, well, I'm going to find out how they do stuff. Yes, and, and, absolutely. You know, so that I can bring back those uh, skills and knowledge, the skills and knowledge that I pick up there and use them to teach others and obviously to teach myself. So, um, yeah. Uh, does that answer your question? Absolutely. Oh, no, absolutely. And as you know, I have more for you. I mean, you've mentioned earlier as well that you've worked with a lot of artists, Chrissy Hind and Paul yeah. Zimmerman and Joe Strummer, to name just a few. And you've yeah. done so many things in your career. And you've also been a singer-songwriter yourself. And you released the top 40 single, Mr. Big Stuff, and you've toured the world. So can yeah. you please tell the listeners, what was that like? Well, do you know what? It was really hardcore. It was really difficult. Um, and by the way, Mr. Big Stuff, I didn't write. So just so, so the, uh -huh. um, it was a, it was a, it was a cover, a Joseph Bruce cover. But actually, and, and there was a very, very good hip hop version that I absolutely loved. Uh -huh. So I did, I did a sort of a kind of, it was a, a kind of a very interesting sort of 12 inch edit on a sort of hip hop styly kind of I like it <laughs> you know indie sort of you know it was a kind of anyway it was interesting and it got played in the wag club I know for about four years every night so wow um and it and it reached the top the, the top 40 in the dance charts but um yeah I went on the strength of that I got uh, picked up a lot of interest in the far east and it ended up going getting a, a world ticket with my manager and going going round round the world and it was hard you know because the the um the stop offs were so there were so many that I forgot you know I'd have to ask my manager what um country I was in <laughs> are the same very it, envious yeah very enviable position to be in I know I know I, I, I tell my artists that that a lot of the problems that the higher profile artists have they're dying to have until they actually have them <laughs> yeah. but, you know because with with um with with 
with the, with that touring. I mean, I never, I think after 